What is up, Modern Year from FlipNormals.com, and in this tutorial, we're going to take a look at probably one of the most powerful plugins inside of ZBrush, and that is Decimation Master. Um, ZBrush has so many of these magical things. Master, Subtool Master. I really like Master. Um, but this major master is is pretty amazing. Um, for those of you who haven't used it before, um, this animation master simply allows you to take a very very high dense um, mesh with a really high poly count and simply just reduce the amount of polys in the mesh, but while while retaining sort of the detail um, of the mesh. And this animation master is phenomenal at keeping the details um, and there are a few options to, to go over but it's it's a relatively simple process and for the people who really don't care about topology and just want to get something out for a quick render um, this is really the way to go I mean you could use something like displacement maps as well but it just takes way longer I mean this is my preferred method I, I usually just decimate my models and then just get them into Maya like um, so this mesh that I have in here is, I mean, it's not particularly high. Um, it's not like a high density mesh. It's uh, 415,000 points, right? So um, not too bad. And it's definitely not like above a million or anything. Um, but pulling this into Maya would probably still be quite a bit of hassle. So um, what you want to do is you want to go to plugins, the plugins, just dock it over and scroll down and you'll find decimation master and it's really really straightforward you have three sort of like three options to go through so the first option is freezing the borders and keeping the uvs um if you have any sort of texturing done for your model make sure you keep the uvs because otherwise they'll just be completely destroyed as well um the freezing borders option is only relevant if your mesh um, has any open like holes in it or anything if it does and you freeze the borders the the decimation won't touch those or it, it'll it'll try to preserve the edges where they are it, and if you don't use this option it'll just sort of decimate everything along with it so just make sure you keep this in mind the next thing you want to do is you want to pre-process your tool now you can either do this um, per subtool basis or you can uh, pre-process all your subtools at once um this is really up to like what you need uh for your project so for this one i'm just gonna go with pre-process current all right so what's happening here is um it basically caches out the geometry onto your hard drive or onto the disk which means that when we start decimating we can dynamically sort of dynamically change it um, this means that we can just sort of like play around with the level of decimation so the default decimation is 20 percent and generally if you decimate something uh, down to 20 percent you're not going to notice any difference at all so right now if we uh, press shift f to look at the wireframe you can see this is the density and this is from dynamesh um, and we if we decimate this tool see there now it's been decimated um, and it's really done a great job at actually preserving all of the detail. So let's just see here. If we take it down to 10%, decimate it again, hardly any difference. I mean, it also depends on, you know, how close you want to get to your model. Because if we go really close, we can see, you know, his face is completely messed up. It was also pretty messed up before, but now it's even more messed up. Um, and especially for those of you with like really high poly um, meshes, uh, it's really, usually I go maybe a lot for a mesh like this, which is already like pretty, pretty low, but usually I'd go into, I, I would go down to something like two to 5%. Um, I mean, going down to 2% of this, you can see it gives you an estimate of, of what it'll get. So it's like 16 K here, which isn't fantastic for, for this mesh. Um, but, but, and again, it's really, it's really dependent on, on like the density of your mesh. Um, once this is done, 
um, you have the destination that you want, you just uh, export all your subtools or just the current subtool, and, and that's really it. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.